Welcome back to our channel. Today we're sketching and painting a purple cone flower. Grandma has those in our garden. Yeah, she does. They're one of my favorite flowers. They attract all kinds of beautiful birds. And I'm going to be including a reference photo, so make sure to download that in the description below. Let's get started. All right. So to get started, some supplies you're going to need for this project are watercolor paper. The paper we have is called Fabriano Artistico. It's a cotton paper. It looks like this if you're looking out for some quality cotton paper. This is great. It comes in a 5 by 7 inch size. And I've taped it down to the desk so our papers don't move around. We each also have a watercolor brush, a pencil, and a Sharpie. And I'm going to be using the Winsor & Newton Cotman set of 12 watercolor paints. And of course, we each have a water jar and some paper towel. Okay, to start with the sketch, we're going to begin with a circle shape. Although I want it to be more of an oval, like a really fat oval. A circle shape for the center of the flower. So let me show you what I mean. And try to draw it towards the top of your composition and right in the middle. So carefully sketch a big fat oval, Here's almost a circle. And it's pretty big. Yeah. All right, so now we get to draw the petals. And I want you to imagine a droopy skirt coming down from the flower. So on this side, I'm going to do a curved line. And on this side, I'm going to do a curved line. And that's kind of like this droopy skirt. And then from there, I'm going to fatten it out and make it a skinny little petal shape. So we're just adding a line running parallel and rounding out the tip of the petal. Now continue drawing some more petals. You can have some that are bigger, some that are skinnier, and try to make them skinny as they're touching the flower, and then they get fatter in the middle, and then skinny at the end again. So they almost look like propellers or something like that. And you can have some that are overlapping each other, like that one. And when you're looking at the petals, in the very front of the flower, are they gonna look bigger or smaller to us? Bigger. Bigger, because they're facing us the closest. So the petals in the very front of the flower, I want those to be the fattest, the widest, the most visible and perfect petal shapes. And then as we draw our petals further away, they get skinnier because from our perspective, they're starting to turn away in space. So you can make these as skinny or as fat as you want. It's really up to you what kind of shapes you want. They just should look like flower petal shapes. I think I made mine a little too long over here. Does not have to be perfect. In fact, you'll never see a cone flower that looks perfect, so to speak. <laughs> They're all a little bit floppy and lopsided and some petals are shorter, some are longer. So don't worry about perfection. In fact, I think it'll look more fun if it's not perfect. Nice. That looks great. So once you've got your flower drawn on, we're going to add a stem. Try to make the stem coming out from the imaginary middle of the flower and have it curve a little bit off to the side. Just a little bit of a curve. You're never going to see a stick straight stem either. Awesome. So we're ready to start painting. We have our Sharpies for a reason. So I'm not going to use the Sharpies on the flower petals, but I'm going to use it on the center of the flower. Because if you look at the photo of the cone flower, it looks kind of spiky, doesn't it? It's got like these little orange and red spikes coming out of it, and then a black center. We can also outline the stem if we want. So what we're going to do now is use our black Sharpie to fill in the black center part of the flower. And also draw on some of the spikes in the flower that we're going to be painting red. Now don't do this all the way at the top. We want to leave some room at the top for just red paint. So starting kind of towards the top, start to draw these little circle shapes or skinny little ovals that represent kind of the spikes in the flower, almost like strawberry seeds, but really close together. At the big bottom of the flower, this whole section right here, we're gonna color that in black. So just go ahead and color it all in. We're not gonna be using any black paint. This will be our black paint. And the nice thing about Sharpie is that you can paint over the top of it and it won't be disturbed by your paint because it's waterproof. So that's why we're doing Sharpie here. Probably the hardest part is drawing those little seeds on the cone part of the flower. So you want them to be kind of pointing outward towards the outer edges of your circle shape, almost like sunbeams. And I'm not gonna color in the very top. Okay, just the bottom of the flower with black. Save the top of it for your bright red and orange. Should I color in between the, all the seeds? Yeah, you can color in between some of the seeds. Again, kind of stopping your black up until about, mostly up to the top. See how I stopped my black right about there? Mm -hmm. 
So this is the hardest part. And if this just feels like way too intimidating, don't worry about it. <laughs> we can work with just solid colors too. But I'm also going to outline my stem. Yeah, very good. Filling in the space between those. It doesn't have to be all filled in. We're gonna be using paint over the top of it anyway. Now we're ready to start painting. So grab your brush. And I've already sprayed my paints to get them wet and ready to use. We're gonna be using this color. I think this is an alizarin crimson for the pink petals. And what we're gonna do is, let's try this. Let's try painting one petal with just water first. Let's start with the big one in the middle maybe. So you should see a glossy surface on your paper. And if there's a ton of water, maybe scoop some of it up with your brush so that it's not a puddle. Nice, glossy and wet. So let's take a little bit of this paint. We're gonna swirl it on the palette first. We want it to be sort of light colored and fill in the whole petal with that color. A watered down pink. We want it to be really glossy. If it's too dry, it's gonna soak up everything out of your brush. That's good. Okay, now take a bunch of really thick paint on your brush. It should be super dark. And we're gonna dab it at the top of the flower. Really thick paint. Just it's dab, 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 dab. And then let's dab it at the very bottom of the petal too. That looks good. Okay, so now this time, let's try something a little easier. We're gonna mix up some really watery, light pink paint, and we're just gonna paint the whole petals this color, one at a time, and then drop in the thicker paint. We're skipping the step of just painting with clear water. Does that make sense? We're gonna start with a tinted wash, is what this is called. And let's do a petal that's further away from this one so it doesn't touch that. So maybe I'll do this one over here. Okay, so paint it in with your tinted wash of pink, and it should be pretty watery. Try to make your paint really watery. It's okay if it touches your flower, obviously there's just Sharpie there. Then grab some really thick paint again. And if you at home have a more perfect pink than this, this isn't really a pink color, it's more of a red, definitely use your pink. So what it should look like is a shiny petal that starts with a dark, base of the, of the petal and then ends with a dark base but is shiny and lighter in the middle and it's starting to look like it's got some shape to it so mixing up some more really watery paint the way I do that is I take some paint put it in the palette and then I dab my brush in water and just swirl that in with it so you have this watery mix of light pink and let's just do another petal that way so grab some more of your watery pink let's do one further away again so they're not touching We'll give those other two time to dry. And then grab some really thick paint. Dab it at the base of the petal. And a tiny bit at the tip. Mine keeps getting a bit too watery still. Okay, if it's too watery, then you might need to grab thicker paint. Even thicker paint? Mm -hmm. Thick, thick paint. It needs to be creamy and not at all watery on your brush. Okay, let's keep doing that with the next petal. So some really watery pink. I'm gonna do one way up here. A little goes a long way when you're working with watery paint. And when you're working on dry paper like this, you want your paint consistency to, to be watery because it's just so much easier to spread it on the paper when it's watery on dry paper. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So we're learning how to adjust our paint consistency from watery to thick and creamy. And when it's really thick and creamy on your brush, it's not going to spread out as fast, right? It kind of sits there a little bit. And that's what we want the dark paint to do at the base of each petal. Like that? Mm-hmm. Good. So if this one's dried, you can do a petal that's right next to it now. It's I not going to blend together if it's dried enough. I didn't do a perfect job of staying inside of the lines right there. That's okay. It's a painting, not a photograph. So keep working, dabbing dark color at the base of each flower. It needs to be super creamy, not watery. So remember, when you put down a tinted wash, it should be very watery and fairly light, light in color, not too dark. And then when we dip our brush directly into the palette and scoop up some really creamy paint, that's when we get to go dark. It's getting a bit watery for me. 
Okay, so what we're looking for with each wet flower petal is a glossy petal, so no puddles. So if you have a puddle right now, that is too much water. So lift it out, and that's probably causing the problems for you is you just have too much water at the beginning. So it should just be kind of soaked in a little bit first. Sitting on the paper and soaking in and looking glossy with no puddles. Then it's ready to take the creamy thick paint and drop it in. Just dab, dab, dab. And all the time we're switching around so that we're working on petals that are not touching wet ones, if that makes sense. So I have a pretty wet petal right here and a pretty wet one right here. So I'm gonna move and work on this one because it's between two dry petals. Does that make sense? It does. Nicely done. It's getting easier, isn't it? It is. Figuring out the technique. And those petals look so shiny. They do. So part of the battle with watercolor is learning how to figure out how wet your brush should be, how dry it should be, how much paint to load up. Usually it's a lot. We're gonna give those some time to dry. And while the petals are drying, we can paint the top of the cone flower. We're gonna start with yellow at the top of the flower. And then we're gonna paint some red, overlapping it a little bit into the cone shape. So I'm scooping up this bright yellow and I'm just gonna swipe it in a circular shape at the top of the flower. And then don't do it yet until you've watched me first. Then I'm gonna rinse that out and grab some of the red again, thick red. And I'm gonna touch that right next to the yellow, like that. Okay, now you try, start with the yellow, really thick paint. And then I'm just gonna take the red and paint it right over the Sharpie, right next to your yellow, letting it touch. Really good, yeah. And then just fill in the rest of the cone with red. Awesome. Do you see how it looks like it's glowing on the top? It does. That is super cool. The last thing we're gonna do is paint our stem. And for this, you can use green, you can use orange. <laughs> in the reference photo, it just looks brown, and I don't think that's very exciting. So I'm gonna use green. I'm gonna take this sap green color, trying to stay inside of your pencil lines. You mean Sharpie? Sharpie lines. And then this is a surprising combination, but what do you get when you mix red and green? Brown? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take my red and swipe it on one of the sides of the green, and it actually turns it into a lovely brown shadow. Do you want to try it? Sure. Make sure your brush isn't too watery though. Blot it on the paper towel, grab a little bit of creamy red paint, I think that's good, and then swipe along the side of the stem to add a shadow. Really good. That looks awesome. And that's it. There's our cone flower. Great yeah. job. <laughs> So if you want to, you can do some spatter effect at the end. Ansley suggested this because it's so much fun. So do you want to do some turquoise blue spatter? You sure. mentioned you wanted to use that color. To do a spatter effect, you're going to need some watery paint on your brush. So I recommend mixing up a separate color over here. And it needs to be super watery. Think about your brush almost dripping. And then you're just going to tap your brush over the background wherever you want to put a little bit of spatter. It's fine if I accidentally get a little bit on your table, right? Yeah. <laughs> My table's fine. It's seen worse. I'm going to do some yellow, too. Oh, that looks pretty. It does. Beautiful cone flower. Look at those beautiful gradations. They are pretty. <laughs> All right. Nice work. If you enjoyed painting with us, hit the like button. And if you love painting with us, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to see more of our awesome videos. Bye. See you in the next one.